Hey everyone, welcome back to my couch. It's me, Julian, author of the fantasy romance The Wolf and the Hawk, available now on Amazon. We are here to talk about writerly things, and something that has been on my mind a lot lately. We have very recently had a bit of a microcosm of a phenomenon that makes me really curious. So I decided to ask in a few different places to see what people thought. Now, my sample sizes are not large because, I don't know if you know this, but I'm not a very popular author tuber, but hey, I'll take what I can get. I asked in three different places, on YouTube, on Twitter, and in the author tube group here on Facebook. I say here, it's here on my laptop over here. What I asked people is whether they think that books by author tubers or booktubers are judged more harshly than books by people who aren't those things. I didn't want to sway anybody's opinions either way, so I didn't weigh in with my own opinion. I just wanted to see what other people thought. I'm sure any of you who are in the author tube scene a little bit may be familiar with The Cyborg Tinkerer, a book from a rather big name author tuber that came out recently, and how it kind of landed with more of a clunk than anything else. But at the same time, we also have a novella by very popular booktuber Daniel Green, which is doing gangbusters. And it just made me think of how much of the online presence of these two people is a factor in the popularity of their work. Are either of them judged more harshly because of their online presence and persona and the fact that Daniel Green critiques books and Meg, the author of The Cyborg Tinkerer, gives writing advice. As someone who both critiques books and gives writing advice myself, I was like, how screwed am I? Have I set myself up for complete doom? I gotta sing the doom song now! Doom, 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 doom. I don't know, but we're gonna find out what other people thought. That's why I have my laptop over here. I'm gonna look at all of my polls and see what people thought and what they commented to see like if we can come to a little bit of a consensus about whether those kinds of books are judged more harshly than a book that is not by an author tuber or booktuber. Okay, so first we're gonna look at the poll that I put up on the author tuber page on Facebook, which if you're not familiar, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's a page where author tubers hang out. We share our videos, we chat, that kind of thing. On this poll, I asked, do you think author tuber slash booktuber books are judged more harshly because they give advice slash pick apart people's books? And 39 people said yes, eight people said no. So right away, we are off to an interesting start with people definitely saying that yes, author and booktubers' books are judged more harshly. I'm gonna look at a few of the comments and see if we can pick out anything specifically. Kelly says, I vote yes, but also I think it's more that most author two books are self-published and by default people will judge them more. And that is a question I didn't really ask in this particular poll, whether self-published books are judged more harshly than traditionally published. I, I think often they are, in my opinion, but that's just my opinion and we're just gonna leave that alone. But this person does think that they are judged more harshly also because they tend to be self-published. Maya says, also because some booktuber books only get published because of the follower count and not the content, and can feel a bit unpolished when you read the final version. So is it possible that some author tubers are going too quickly, are publishing too soon when their book could use more editing, because they know that they will be successful thanks to their following? Sarah says, I'd say yes. Even I have done this, not in a mean way, but I've watched an author tuber who gives a lot of writing advice. I finally had a chance to read a book of hers, and it was a good book, but it wasn't written in the style I was expecting. I was expecting something more literary. Just that I was surprised based on how she talks about writing and presents herself as an expert. I guess I had it in my mind to expect something else. So that's something that can definitely be a pitfall if you give advice online. People expect you to be an expert if you give advice. I don't know, I guess that depends on what you think makes an expert. Like, I wouldn't call myself an expert, but I do think there are a few things that I could potentially give advice on. People point out that a lot of it does have to do with author tubers not practicing what they preach. So author tubers that are giving advice are really kind of shooting themselves in the foot a little bit too when we find out that they are not able to enact all of that advice in their book. 
I've talked about this before, but you do not necessarily have to be good at something to know how it should work. Which also comes into play with the reviewing of books. Many, many reviewers can look at a book and see what's wrong with it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they themselves are going to be able to do that thing correctly if they write the book. It's kind of two separate skills, and people lump them together really quickly and easily. Catherine says, I've definitely seen it happen, but I don't think it's as widespread as people think. That could be possible. Raylin says, in the general reading community, I can't say, but they certainly seem more harshly criticized by the booktube slash authortube community. So yes, that could also be a factor. And because they are authortubers, their readers are more likely to be authortubers as well. By the way, I have my windows open, so if you hear birdies and cars, it's a beautiful day outside, so I'm gonna have my windows open. I don't mind this sound of birdies. Hopefully they don't annoy you too much. Let's hop over to my Twitter next where I got considerably fewer votes because I am not very popular on Twitter. Hey, you should come over and follow me on Twitter. It'd be fun. I promise. Sometimes I say funny things. Over on Twitter, six people voted with 66% at yes and 33% at no. So yes is still winning. We do have the sentiment over here on Twitter of someone saying that they, they hope that author and booktubers are judged more harshly, which is an interesting take. They didn't elaborate as to why they hope that we're judged more harshly, but they hope we are. And the other comments are basically saying the same thing. If that person gives advice, then they are probably going to be judged more harshly if they fail to follow that advice. And finally, let's go over to my YouTube, where actually I got the most feedback, honestly, uh, with 99 votes. So I almost got 100 votes on this. And 62% said yes, author tubers and booktubers are judged more harshly, with 38% saying no, they're not. Let's see if we can find anything else in the comments besides what we've already been hearing. Martha kind of mentions that it probably is a factor that these author tubers and booktubers are getting more attention right away versus other self-published people because they have a following. And so per potentially it could seem more like they're being judged harshly just because like their following is right there and ready to give them reviews immediately. This person whose name I cannot pronounce mentions that it also could be a factor of the person. If you just don't like me as an author tuber, then you might just go rate my book low because you don't like me. That is completely a thing that can happen. The more you are out there in the world, the more people can get to know you, the more people can get to dislike you, and they might take it out on your poor innocent book. I don't know if this has happened to me personally, but I could definitely see it happening with author tubers or book tubers. They often have a following that really, really likes them, but they also might have a following that really, really doesn't. Trope Trinity Trilogy points out that because author tubers attract people who read and write, they are perhaps more likely to get harsh reviews because those people are used to critiquing and, and taking apart books and looking at everything critically. So it might just be that we're also not getting average readers. We're getting people who are ready and here to take apart books. Lair is vibing mentions that some of it could be, again, because we talked about disliking the person, some author tubers can come off as very arrogant and I know better than you and that can rub people the wrong way. So people are going in primed and ready to look for things that might be wrong with their book. I hope I don't come off that way. If I do, I apologize. There was a trend that's fading now. I'm pleased to see that it's fading, but some author tubers are still sticking to it, where you never criticize yourself, you always praise your own work, you always hype up your own work, and I can see that from a marketing standpoint, but from the standpoint of dealing with your audience, it makes you sound really arrogant, and when, then when they read your book and it's flawed, like any book would be, there's no perfect book in the world, they read your book and it's flawed, then they're like, well, that person's awfully full of themselves for having written something this flawed, aren't they? One star. Basically what I'm getting here is that the internet hates hypocrisy and really who doesn't? So especially if that author tuber or book tuber is harsh on other people's books, but then can't do the thing perfectly themselves, they're probably gonna get critiqued for it. So now that I've looked at all of these polls, you can get my opinion. If it hasn't been bleeding into my conversation, it probably has. I do think that author tubers and booktubers are both judged more harshly, especially author tubers, especially those that give advice. I think that we are often judged more harshly. I say we, even though I'm not entirely certain that I have been judged more harshly than anyone else, but 
You guys know I've done it too. I have held an author tuber to a high standard because in their videos they have talked themselves up so highly. They have talked about all of the things that you should or shouldn't do in your book and then they have failed to make those happen in their own book. And I think for me, for me personally, the line is if that author tuber cannot admit that maybe sometimes they aren't perfect at everything, that's when I'm going to start judging them more harshly, personally. There are some author tubers I watch who are way more earnest and mention things they struggle with, and I am much more inclined to be charitable towards them because they know they're not a perfect author and they don't project hey, I'm a perfect author onto the screen. Now that's just me, everybody's different. You guys know I both write books and I read books and I tear books apart here on YouTube because they're my most popular videos, let's be real. Does the fact that those are my most popular videos also potentially hurt the ratings of my own book? Am I just a snake eating its own tail, going in an endless circle of doom and destruction? Probably. That sounds pretty on brand for me. I just read a meme that completely encapsulates my feelings. Life is a tornado and I am a cow being spun around for a cinematic value. So now's your chance if you haven't voted on the poll, if you haven't had a chance to comment yet, comment below what you think our author tubers and booktubers judge more harshly. Or as in the case of Daniel Green, is he being judged too kindly because he's a very very well-liked booktuber. Comment below and let me know. Or do you think that this is being blown way out of proportion and authortuber and booktuber's books are judged just like everybody else's? So what the fuck are we whining about? We, for better or ill, live in a world where it is becoming more and more dependent on us authors to sell our own books. Whether we're self-published or traditionally published, the author is being sold a lot more. Gone are the days when you basically used to be able to be a hermit. Most authors are required to have some kind of presence and interact with their fans, at least somewhat. Being an author tuber and a booktuber is just sort of an extension of that for many people. All right, I'm gonna end this video. I feel like it's gonna be a pretty long already and I have other videos to film today. So thank you for watching. There's lots of stuff here on my channel if you wanna check it out, if you wanna get a feel for my critiquing style and also for my teaching style as an author tuber. Tons of videos, all in nice playlists for you. Plus, if you want, you can follow me over on Patreon, where for as little as a dollar a month, you get exclusive content not seen here on the regular channel. All the links to my social media are in the doobly-doo. My Twitter's looking a little thin if you want to come visit me over there. Sometimes there will be polls for you to answer that might end up in videos. Who knows? Links in the doobly-doo. And I will see all of you again next time with whatever it is I happen to be doing next time. Bye! It has come to my attention that there may be a few people left in the world who do not know who my patrons are, and this will not stand. My patrons are Belle, Anne Sophie, Callison, Ray, Artemis, Shelby, Zaire, Jesper, Irene, Scribbling Cat, Savvy, Jenny, Amanda, Lisa, Sarah, Anna W, Anna C, Light Julie, OS, Lennox, Kit, Hayden Glade, and Persephone. There, consider yourselves educated on the best people in the whole world. You're welcome. Hey, I'm not giving up today. There's nothing getting in my way. And if you knock, knock me over, I will get back up again. Oh, if something goes a little wrong, well, you can go ahead and bring it on. Because if you knock, knock me over, I will get back up again.